U.S. and Nigerian leaders concluded official high-level talks on Thursday on plans to withdraw all American military forces from the country, a U.S. military official told VOA. VOA Pentagon correspondent Carl Barb has more on how the withdrawal affects the fight against terrorism in the region. A U.S. military official has told VOA that U.S. and Nigerian leaders agreed American forces will begin a phased withdrawal from Niger in the coming months after being in the country for over a decade. The official added that participants in negotiations this week confirmed protections and immunities for U.S. personnel. Officials in Niger also approved diplomatic clearances for the withdrawal flights to ensure smooth entries and exits during the pullout of U.S. forces who were in the country to help local militaries combat Islamist terrorists in the Sahel. Countries like Mali, like Niger, like Nigeria, uh, Burkina Faso, um, these have seen an expansive um, rise in jihadist movements. These are some of the most dangerous areas in the world. The United States spent more than $100 million building a drone base near the central Nigerian city of Agadez to surveil Al-Qaeda, the Islamic State, and other terror groups. Because of the withdrawal, the U.S. base will end its drone surveillance there about five years after drone operations began. Niger was somewhat of a rarity in the sense that it had one of the few democratically elected governments in the region and also a democratically elected government that was friendly to the U.S. and willing to host a U.S. military presence. And so finding a replacement for, that, for a military base is going to be somewhat difficult. Martinez McKine says the U.S. will likely reach out to neighboring Chad to base more American troops following Chad's presidential election earlier this month. Chad and the U.S. are currently reviewing their security cooperation agreements. We're going to continue to stay engaged with the partners in the region when it comes to terrorism and countering the terrorist threat. Um, because again, you know, I think we all collectively can work together to address those very real threats. The withdrawal is seen as a huge blow to the U.S. counter-terror fight. Without bases in the Sahel, U.S. drones will need to fly from thousands of miles away to keep an eye on terror groups wreaking havoc in the region. Carla Bab, VOA News, the Pentagon. Kenyan lawyers have moved to block the country's planned deployment of police to Haiti. A court filing showed days before officers are expected to arrive in the Caribbean nation to tackle spiraling violence there. Responding to Haiti's appeal for assistance, Kenya offered last July to send 1,000 officers to Haiti to help tackle a worsening security crisis where escalating gun control has plunged millions into a humanitarian crisis. However, Kenya's high court ruled in January that the police officers could not be deployed to Haiti in absence of a reciprocal arrangement with the host government. Kenyan President William Ruto then signed a security deal with Haiti's then Prime Minister Aliel Henry in March, which Nairobi hoped would satisfy the court's objections and allow the deployment to go ahead. The applicants are reliably informed that the implanted deployment may be done any time from now. The plaintiffs said in Thursday's application, adding that a May 23rd deadline for the step made the matter urgent. In March, the government said it was pausing the deployment after the designation of Haitian Prime Minister Aliel Henry. But Ruto said later that the swelling in of a transition council in Haiti on April 25th had addressed concerns about a power vacuum there and that Kenya was now discussing how to proceed with its deployment. Last week, the U.S. military's Southern Command said civilian contractors had arrived in Haiti to build living quarters for the Kenyan-led force. Jamaica, the, Bah the Bahamas. Barbados, Benin, Chad, and Bangladesh have also pledged personnel to the force. Foreign governments have been reluctant to take part in the mission. Many Haitians have also been wary of international interventions after previous UN missions left behind a devastating Corella epidemic and sex abuse scandals.